Hey friends, Jeff Fritz here, and I want to talk to you about the latest updates to the Intel Performance Primitives libraries. Now for those folks that are targeting Sandy Bridge and Skylake processors, you're going to see some great updates that are available to you because you're going to use those AVX2 and AVX512 instruction sets. Let me show you a sample and how you can do blurring and rotation of images with the new performance primitives and get some great performance from it. When you blur an image and you want to target that top left pixel, you need to tell the blurring algorithm what to do with the borders around that pixel. Should we replicate the borders so that if our image isn't big enough, we're going to copy the contents out across the edge of that so we know what to blur against? Do we want to use some sort of a constant so that all the border pixels are set to the same value? Or maybe we'd like them to be transparent so that the destination pixels have the inverse transformed location out of the source image or not processed. Or maybe we want some sort of mix of the two and be able to reference and do something simple with our border pixels. In my experience, the constant borders are pretty easy to work with and give a nice blur effect. All right, let's go over to some code and take a look at exactly how we can use our border blurring specification here along with the IPP, the Intel Performance Primitives Library, to blur an image. All right, let's take a look at the method that we're going to use. We're going to set up three image channels here. We're going to define a border value to extend the source image a little bit further using those three channels. Initialize some sizes, set up some pointers so that we can have our buffers appropriately placed. We're going to start processing from the 0, 0 coordinate. That's the top left of the image, that first pixel in the top left corner. We're going to specify a constant border so that we get the same value on our borders around the outside of the image when we start blurring. We're going to warp forward in our blurring, set the border value to extend the source image. So those values are all going to be set to 255. Get the size of the image. Compute the buffer size for the image, allocate some memory, initialize data so that we can start transforming, get our work buffer, allocate memory for that work buffer, and start processing here on line 92. Of course, we're going to clean up after ourselves by freeing the allocated memory and return a little bit of status information. Real easy sample here to get us started with blurring this image. Let's go take a look at the sample application running after we build and launch the application. So here it is. Here's my two images, and I can start blurring them by pressing the up arrow on my keyboard. And you can see the image blur on the left. I can press down, and it'll reduce the blur and bring everything back into focus. I can rotate by pressing left and right, and our image easily spins for us. I can even do a little bit of both and blur as I spin. I'm getting great performance because I'm using the new Intel Performance Primitive Libraries. Now maybe you're working on a Microsoft platform and you want to grab a package from NuGet so that you can include it and get started right away. Here are the Intel packages on NuGet.org that include the Intel Performance Primitive Libraries that you can start working with. There's 11 different packages here depending on your processor, your operating system that you're working on. Now that was just one real quick sample that Intel has made available for us. They've also made updates to the libraries that are going to improve the way that you can manage sound, editing it, modifying it, and warping it so that you can get variable rate playback inside your applications and get great performance on the latest Intel processors. I hope you check it out and download the latest from intel.com. Take care.